This week's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash DJ Force X. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello and welcome to this week's DJ Force X podcast. This is episode 74 and my special guest this week is the one, the only, Des Fafara. Uh, he is the front man of Devil Driver and also Cold Chamber, um, who were a huge band back in the day, or my day I should say, my sort of late teens, early 20s. Um, yeah, this was a, a a great chat. We've been uh, basically Devil Driver out on a tour uh, in Europe in a in a couple of weeks. They're going to be hitting the big festivals, including Download and Hellfest and stuff like that. And we uh, we touch on that. We also talk about the uh, current album they have out called Trust No One, uh, which is out now on Napalm Records. So do go check that out. It's a fantastic album. Um, yeah, we touch on multiple other things as well. So you know, listen for the interview when it comes up shortly. Um, I just want to say thank you as well to um, everyone who downloaded the past couple of episodes uh it's been noticed and um also people who are backing the circuit movie which i had manu interame uh on a few weeks ago uh it has reached its goal for the pilot and it's looking for more obviously so they can fund further episodes as it goes forward but the fantastic news is it's hit that mark um but still go go donate go to the circuit movie.com and go to that kickstarter also that pacific 201 movie we spoke about last week with uh, eric henry go throw some money at that as well because that looks fantastic go check it out that's pacific201.com um so yeah thank you for that uh obviously still looking for rates reviews shares all that kind of stuff but you know the score on that with multiple podcasts people ask for the same thing so i'm not going to bore you for much longer this is des Fafara. enjoy Right, I hear it. I hear you. That's uh, all good. Uh, thank you for doing this, first and foremost. Um, no problem. Thank you uh, for the support. Yeah, no problem. It's an absolute pleasure, to be honest with you. I've been a fan of yours for a while, so it's uh, uh, Thank you very much, It's man. all good. So, um, yeah, let's just go into it. Um, yeah, welcome to my show. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I've got uh, Des from Devil Driver right here. And, uh, yeah, we're just uh, we're going to chat about uh, a couple of uh, – you've got a European tour coming up couple of festivals yep. Uh, yep. and your album as well so um yeah trust no one it came out last year uh via napalm that's right yep and, absolutely uh, yeah it's a killer album love it uh thank you very much a couple of standout tracks for me trust no one the title track i love that one um thank you very much my night sky and uh for what it's worth was another one as well which is uh, uh, thank you very much we're hearing a lot of that but we're probably going to add for what it's worth in because we're hearing that so much that's uh, uh, uh a song i wrote about my wife and our are you know almost 20 year relationship and so then that song is very personal to me so i appreciate you saying that awesome awesome no it's uh yeah so thank you for writing it it's good yeah yeah, 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 right on right on i mean look we we worked very hard on that record uh and it it debuted uh the highest debut we've had here in the united states and debuted very high around the world um we really took our time we we worked very 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 diligently and to to hear it come out as, as successful as it did um the critical acclaim was you know around the world was was fantastic um and it really created and inspired a new kind of feeling uh within this band and we kind of found a new way of writing as well uh that we're going to now utilize in the future that that really can like shows us flaws in the songs as we're writing mm. um and, you know, not to give away trade secrets, but we've just established this working relationship that's been absolutely fantastic. The relationship with Napalm is is great. Um, cool. And, we've, you know, we've been touring on the record quite significantly now. And, and I can't wait to come over and do these festivals because it's just it's just time. Like we're playing My Night Sky live, uh, Daybreak live. Um, we're probably going to add for what it's worth by the time we get over there to, to do the festivals. And it's going to be a fantastic summer. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, I'm with that. I mean, you're playing the uh, couple of the download festivals. The I think it was the one in France and one in the UK. 
Right. Absolutely. And we're, I think we're one of the only bands to be allowed to play uh, Download Paris and Hellfest France. So I really uh, appreciate the promoters for, for allowing that to happen. Yeah, I was going to uh, say, playing both those, I was going to reference <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're not, lineups, you know, so. as, a, as, a, as a band, that's not really uh, proper, that's not really allowed. But I've got relationships, long-time relationships with, with the people who run both those festivals, obviously. Um, and it's the only time we're going to be over there this year so i think you know i said hey look it's just important to us to get everywhere we can and we are allowed to play both those festivals so i'm extremely thankful excellent excellent that's always good to hear that uh you know relationships can go further in that in this trade um whereas sometimes it's a, like you always get that kind of like no not this time but next year but you can't do that one and um right, having, right. i've got a bit of a past in the music industry myself so i've kind of <laughs> that side of it as well right um, well you know what you know what it is always like that too i mean look if you if you come do download this year you're probably not going to do it next year mm. that's just the way that that is but but that's understandable uh yeah. there's you know certain markets you can come to every single year and do that kind of a thing and others you got to wait it out and, and i don't mind the wait out it just makes it more exciting when we are coming cool excellent excellent so um like i said like prior to starting this uh fan of yours um i saw back in the day cold chamber um probably one of your early london shows uh the astoria uh i think it was like late 90s 97 98 ish i don't know it was my late teens <laughs> <laughs> okay all uh, right i think you're with yeah, hum- I- human waste project i think oh yeah amy echo god i love her yeah it was, uh, a, it was a long while fantastic. ago Fantastic. I remember that show, that Astoria show. Yeah. Um, in actuality, there, there was so much fog on the stage, I crawled out on my belly to the front of the stage and just stood up out of nowhere, and people didn't know where the fuck I came from. Yeah, that's what kind of <laughs> sticks in my head. It was just the, 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 the stage show you guys had at that point. was uh, It was crazy. For, I mean, it, I hadn't I – mean, I wasn't a seasoned veteran of shows at that point, but right I hadn't on, seen anything right like that, really. <laughs> so it was uh, no it was really cool i really enjoyed it and then uh i i've actually seen you in devil driver as well uh, again in london um it was at the underworld in camden oh that was must have been one of our first shows yeah it was i think that was like middle mid, oh seven okay yeah that, that no that was more like maybe oh four man we, we maybe. maybe yeah it was like one of our first shows over there to, as a matter of fact it was the, on the first record which must have been 2003, maybe four. Yeah. And we, did, we didn't even have enough to do 40 minutes because we were just playing, the, you know, I wasn't doing any Cold Chamber songs. I was just doing Devil Driver tunes. Yeah. And when we ran out of tunes after 40 minutes, people were chanting more and we're like, we don't have more. <laughs> but, but we knew Ace of Spades by Motorhead and we played it. <laughs> and, that, and what's funny is that kind of ended up staying in the set for the first record cycle because we didn't have more than 40 minutes to play. So. Nice. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I enjoyed that show. I enjoyed that show. Excellent. No, it's, uh, yeah. No, like I said, I've, I've been following you guys for a while, and uh, I particularly liked uh, one of your previous albums, "Pray for Villains." Oh, that, for, very that cool. Album, oh, that was on uh, that was on Roadrunner, wasn't it? It was one of your th- absolutely. Yeah, that was yeah, um, yeah, that was on Roadrunner. But I was a uh, I was a DJ in the UK at that point, and that the title track "Pray for Villains" was actually quite big in the clubs I played. Um, cool. As much as you know, it got like heavy rotation and you know prime time play and stuff like that. So cool, love it, love it, man. So we'll give my kind of backstory on you guys. <laughs> yeah, look, man, I've always had a lot of support uh, in, in the UK, and and I've kind of always said it to everybody. I, I said if you if you can make it in uh, New York, LA, in the in UK, then you can play in you know Peoria. You know, you can yeah. play in Ohio. Yeah. You can play in Ohio. You know, so. Uh, early on, uh, any band I was ever influenced by, I mean, uh, all came from the UK. Uh, so, you know, I knew early on when we were going over with Cold Chamber, okay, if we hit this market, we hit it right, you know, chances are we'll, we'll make a go of it. And um, it's been, a, it's been a, a pleasure of mine to actually call, you know, that territory uh, home for me. It just feels like home for me. When I come to the UK and do shows, there's so many people on my bus and so many people backstage. It just, it just feels like a hometown show. So, you know, I, I thank everybody for that. And my gratitude definitely goes out in, 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 in numbers, you know, in great numbers for that. Excellent. No, that's, uh, it's always good to hear on that front that you uh, consider it a, a home territory, which is always nice. Oh yeah. I mean, but let's face it. There's nothing better than a fucking English breakfast and black tea. Oh, that's very true. <laughs> that's one thing I do miss over here. I, I actually live in Florida, so um, okay, yeah. I, I moved away from that area, but um, yeah, that's the one thing I do try and find like the English pub 
brown hair. There is oh, one. Like, 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 it's funny now. My wife, you know, she'll always make tomatoes and beans with breakfast because it's just like I'll look down at my plate and just look at her and she knows there's beans in <laughs> it. You know, and uh, you don't you don't see that in the United States. You know, you go, you know, you're you're yeah. in Florida. You you don't get beans for breakfast, but no. uh, that's that's a mainstay for me since you know '96 since I was coming over there. Excellent. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, so um, obviously this tour you, you're hitting various uh, European cities. Um, which one is apart from London, which we've already kind of what, what is your favorite sort of European city to play? Uh, wow. This is this is difficult. Uh, it's it's also very different from America, and you know that living in Florida. So it could be anywhere. It could be you know Prague, and then all of a sudden Barcelona, and, and all you know all of a sudden you know we're in Milan. Like I just I love that the next morning I'm waking up. They're 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 speaking another language. Yeah, and they're and they're eating different food. <laughs> and I traveled six hours. Like if I travel six hours right now, there's still going to be a Waffle House and a Denny's, yeah, you, know, like, you know, so, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's always amazing to me that like, you know, Oh, I woke up in Switzerland and now I'm in Italy and you know, now I'm in France and they're speaking another language. I, so I don't know. I, I can't really nail that down to favorite city. Okay. Um, anywhere. And I, and I've been saying this my whole career, anywhere there's more than 50 people that are willing to, to bang their head. is like a really good night. Right. Yeah. And, and I love from the smaller shows that are five to six hundred people to, you know, download that's seventy to a hundred thousand people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's hard to nail down, and I mean that's crazy too. I don't think anyone's ever asked me from Europe what's your favorite city in Europe. It'd just be very, very hard. I mean, last time we were in Moscow, I had a, such a great time. I got Devil Driver tattooed on my arm in in Russian. So. Yeah. You know, just uh, I, I love to travel. I love to meet new people, new cultures, and uh, that's a a. Uh, I guess that's a uh, that's a that's a, a caveat yeah. that comes along with me being a musician is that I get to go do those things that you know sometimes the travel gets to you but other times you're traveling and you're wide eyed and you're like oh I love this you know so yeah. it's it's, a, it's been a great time awesome excellent um, so um, beyond beyond this forthcoming tour um, are, are are you planning any more Devil Driver uh, is there going to be like a like a sort of headline tour or support tour coming? Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff coming. I mean, we, we, we in May here, we go do Blackest of the Black with Danzig and Ministry and a bunch of killer bands. Nice. Um, and then in June, we come over to see you guys for festivals. In July, we have a one-off at Chicago Open Air with, uh, you know, Slipknot and yeah. Ozzy and Slayer. And we're on a great day there with Slayer uh, for that. In August, uh, the beginning of August, we go down and do all of South America. Uh, and then in the middle of August, we start an 11 week tour in the United States, which will probably be breaking for like two and a half, three weeks over Halloween. I don't okay. miss, I don't miss Halloween at my house. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bunch of dates in a row. It's, it's yeah. Halloween. It's my wife's birthday. It's our anniversary, like all within a week. So okay. I never miss that. Um, I did that in my younger years and I don't miss that now. So yeah, yeah we're yeah. starting an 11 week run in the fall time over here. And then in February, either in January, February or February, March, we're getting ready to do uh, what, what we've all talked about in the band is like the re assault on the UK and on Europe, on mainland Europe, which means we haven't really be coming over and doing the, the long headline tours we should be doing mm -hmm. uh, either because other tours are happening here or we were in the studio at the time. And so next year is the year we've committed to come over twice to headline. Cool. Uh, and, you know, once in the beginning of the year, once in the end of the year, and also come over for the end of the year, August festival. So we'll be over there a great deal next year. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. That's good to hear because I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll probably be coming to see you. I'm actually moving back to England <laughs> in a couple oh, of months. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, well, so. I mean, feel free, man. I mean, look, you got my Skype number now too, so just, you know, just yeah. hit me up on Skype and tell me where you're at and I'll, I'll put you on the list and we can come up on the bus and, you know. Awesome. That sounds I got, great. I, I usually got some good weed and, you know, hey. I, I, don't, I, don't drink, I don't drink booze anymore, so it's a BYOB situation. Yeah, no, I, I don't drink either. Um, yeah, pr yeah good, good for you, man. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, I stopped out a while ago, but um, – yeah, definitely. You're more than welcome, cool. and and we've got a lot, we've got a lot of touring doing to do. You know, we, yes. we've we've when we had our, our last band meeting, it was like, okay, what do we really need to do? It's like, well, we we need to pull an all out assault on Europe for the next two years. So that's that's what we're setting up to do next year and the following year, cool. uh, based on this this new record that's coming out uh, next year. There's something that we're working on that's been 
kind of undercover, but not. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask if it was uh, in in support of Trust No One still, or if there was something new coming out. No, so no, it is. Yeah, we we're going to be on Trust No One for two years, but we're we're kind of uh, putting something out in the midway that's between. I don't want to say between records because it's a full record, but it's uh, something just intense. It's it's something that's never been done before by a metal band. Uh, I've got at least twenty to twenty five A level Grammy award winning guests oh, on the nice. record. Um, it's just it's two genres that have never been like kind of put together. It's it's going to be fantastic, and it's something that's extremely extremely different. So we're looking forward to that, and 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 we're going to be on the road during that because we're 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 still on the on the trust no one cycle right now. Excellent, excellent. So um, obviously with that, you've got the next sort of couple of years planned out. Is there any future plans for Cold Chamber, or is that kind of put to rest now? Well, I mean, look, we, we, we waited 13 years to get back together. We released Rivals. Yeah. Uh, Al, Al from Ministry, a great friend of mine, guest on it. The, the thing came out strong. Um, the, the tours all over the world sold out. America was completely sold out. The festivals were incredible. Uh, all the shows through the UK were sold out. So, you know, I had just realized that over the course of the year with them, that there was, uh, you know, there was some things within those members that still needed to be worked on. Yeah. Uh, not not relationship problems between them and me whatsoever. Yeah. Some personal personal issues between them that made me realize I'm not going to keep taking this on the road like this. I thought things would be fixed after 13 years, but maybe not. Uh-huh. Um, and these are things that they got to work on, personal things that they have to work on. So my, my book is always open. I'm not going to close the book. Yeah. I never uh, – and, and if they, they know my number. So if they if they choose to take those things uh, within themselves and work on themselves as human beings and grow up, for lack of a better word, <laughs> then like feel free to call me, you know. And here's the here's the bottom line: there's a lot of fans that waited 12 years to hear those songs. Yeah, my heart was broken for 12 years. I couldn't play the songs that made me. Um, and I in Devil Driver, I had refused, of course, to even play cold chamber song mm-hmm. uh there was a time about a month ago when the phone rang it was 11 o'clock at night it was from a blocked caller i happened to be home my wife grabbed my phone uh she handed it to me i answered the phone and it was glenn danzig who's a very close friend of mine my first tour ever was with glenn yeah um and he said hey is your wife there and I, yeah I put her on speakerphone and i thought okay this is crazy it's 11 at night glenn's calling me he didn't even text me <laughs> Puts her on the phone and says, Anastasia, I want uh, I want Des to play Blackest of the Black with us in May. And I said, cool. You know, uh, we have a management company as well. We handle the band. And, yeah. and she's like, great. You know, no problem. I'll talk to the agent. We'll book it. What else, Glenn? It's like, I want him to stop running. And we both looked at each other like, I don't know where the fuck he's going with this. <laughs> and he said, look, man, when I left the Misfits, uh, I didn't have enough songs to play. I played, I played uh, Sam Haynes songs. I played Misfits songs when I was in Danzig. Uh, Rob Zombie, when he left White Zombie, played White Zombie song. Yeah. Like, why are you running from your past? And I want you to uh, play Blacks of the Black. I want you to do some Cold Chamber song. So that led to a conversation with my band members. Said, hey, there's at least five that for sure I would love to play. Can we do three of them? And instead of anybody, well, I don't know, or I don't know if that would fit with our style and all of that, the first thing out of my guitar player's mouth, Mike, with the long dreads, was, please tell me we can play Fiend. <laughs> so, so, you know, and I've wanted to hear those songs for years tight, yeah. because no matter, no matter, you know, we were, Cold Chamber is a very loose band. I always wanted to hear those songs tight, always wanted to hear those songs with two guitars, because in the beginning, Cold Chamber was going to start with two guitar players, mm-hmm. but that didn't end up happening. Um, and I've always wanted to hear them just, like I said, tight, two guitars, double bass, kick. Uh, and so we're going to probably in the fall time start rehearsing two or three Cold Chamber songs. And I'm going to stop being bummed out that I can't play my own tunes. And I'm just going to go out and start playing my own tunes. Now, that'll do two things. There's a lot of Cold Chamber fans that don't come to Devil Driver shows. Yeah. There's a ton of Devil Driver fans that don't come to a Cold Chamber show. Yeah. It'll unite people. At that point, people will be like, okay, if I want to hear Cold Chamber songs, I'm going to go see Devil Driver. And, you know, if I'm a Cold Chamber fan, I'm going to go see it. And and also, if you're a Devil Driver fan, you're not going to run from that because you're going to say, like, I wonder what that sounds like. Like, how can they do 
loco. Well, let me just give you an example. If you do loco with two guitars and double bass kick and it's tight as fuck, it's probably one of the heaviest songs you'll hear. Yeah. Like, and so we're, we're definitely, we're going to embark on that now. And it's a, it's a situation where I'm not sure if Cold Chamber will ever do anything again. Yeah. Uh, I just recently sent a text, you know, last week to all the members just saying something about business like, hey, da 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 da, we've got to do something. And, you know, it takes, you know, we're all a unit here. It's going to take four people to say okay for, you know, one fucking thing to get done. <laughs> and I didn't, and I didn't hear from anybody. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, now that thing is not going to be done. And no one talked to each other. It's like, there's just stuff that needs to be, uh, yeah needs to be worked out and you know look i wish it was like personal shit between us or i wish it was we don't get along and we need to get along but it's not it's shit that like you can't take people out on the road if you think you know they may die in the bunk from yeah. whatever they're doing in their personal life so that's where i'm at you know and i'm not about to to give the the bad kid more money so he can go out and kill himself and that's just where i'm at yeah. that's just where i'm at with cold chamber but they know where i'm at they know my number and if they called me at three in the morning, uh, stuck on the side of the freeway, I'd fucking pick them up. <laughs> and that's just that's that's my personality. I've never burnt yeah. a bridge, and I don't I don't have any ill will on anybody. Well, mostly nobody, <laughs> you know. And so we'll see what happens in the future. But you you got to imagine, right? You you get in a band and you come up and you get gold records and you go all over the world. And then now I'm not allowed to play those songs because the rest of the members don't have their shit together. Yeah. Well, I think that's why Dan's had called me that night and said, hold on, wait a minute. Uh, when, Rob Zombie, when Rob Zombie went out, like he did White Zombie songs, right? And then he told me, and I did Misfit songs, right? It's like, what the fuck are you not doing your own songs for? Yeah. And I looked at my wife that night as I rolled a fat joint and said, you know what? It's on. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that. And, and, and I'm letting everybody know, too. I've been saying it in press. Get ready. You know yeah. I mean? Get, get ready. And, and I, 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 you know, look, the Cold Chamber fans that want to see Cold Chamber proper do Cold Chamber songs, like, I don't know if that's ever going to happen again. So if you want to hear those songs, you best come out and just see Double Driver. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, because it works, like I say, you work with, uh, with uh, Rob Zombie and things, and uh, Max Cavalera is another prime example when he went off to do Soulfly. <laughs> Off the separate oh yeah, you know, you know, and I think I think Glenn brought that up too. Yeah. And if Glenn didn't bring that up, when Glenn got off the phone with us, we were up till two in the morning talking after that phone call, naming artists who, you know, played their past songs and didn't run from it. And then my wife kind of looked at me and went, "Yeah, wait a minute, like why haven't you played Cold Chamber songs other than Cold Chamber?" My thing was this: if it was going to get back together in two years, five years, or fifteen years, which it took thirteen. I didn't want to ruin it for people. I wanted to make them wait, and when we came back, it would be something special. Yeah. Now that I now that I realize, like some of the shows were fucked up because people weren't on their game. There's no reason to give people a half-hearted, half-hearted reunion. No. And if the half-hearted reunion is to continue, like, what's that going to be like in a year? That's just going to be a complete mess. Uh, you know, with, with, with people leaving in stretchers on the way to rehab or, or because there's fights breaking out. So you get uh, look, man, if you're a band member and you're listening to this or, or reading this transcript, <laughs> you got to get along. Yeah. You have to get along. You have to have fun or everything on the record is going to be transparent. People are going to feel it. And especially live because I'm the guy who's backstage. I know when bands hate each other. And then I go out and I watch them live, and I'm like, it's obvious you hate each other. Yeah. You didn't even look at each other for the last hour, and you're playing something as beautiful as music. So that's never going to happen. And if you know, in my life, it, you know, like it just happened with Devil Driver. You know, we hadn't had a member change in almost 12 years, and I was at home. I made a phone call to my ex drummer. I said, look, we got one one more show with Slipknot, and then. Three more shows in Europe, in uh, Australia. I said, we haven't gotten along in 10 years. We fight on every record. We fight after every show. I said, this is ridiculous. I love you like a brother. We can't play music anymore. And he was like, you're right. And we did the rest of the tours, had a great time. We ate lunch together at the airports. It was fantastic. And we parted ways. And now the vibe in the band is absolutely a pleasure. I mean, like, when I come to rehearsal, I come home, my, I'm smiling so hard, my face hurts. Nice. Yeah, and so that that's the lesson to be learned if you're a band member or if you're in a band or you're in this industry. You got to get along with people or it's going to show through. Yep. And don't do it. And if you don't get along, don't go make music. 
because music is supposed to be beautiful. Like that means you're just forcing music and to force something as beautiful as music. It's like forcing sex on something. You know, you don't want that. You want every party to be involved. So there you go. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome advice there. Thank you. Um, so I've got a couple of questions left. I've got some fan questions, which I sure. managed to wrangle out of some people. Um, so uh, at the moment, uh, what bands or albums are really uh, firing you up? Uh, right now. You know what? Like, like um, I really like this band Black Tusk. I think they're killer. Nice. Yes. Uh, I really, I think they're killer. Um, you know, <sighs> I've been listening to such other crazy stuff as well. Like there's some new punk rock bands that have been coming out. Um, you know, I listen to a lot of other, other stuff that people don't listen to as well. You know, like, like guys like excision. I mean, oh, yeah. he's basically, he's basically the punk rock heavy metal of drum and bass stuff. And like, yeah. we're real good friends with him. We just went to his show and like, you know, everybody's banging their head and his shirts say headbanger. Yeah. And there's 3000 people banging their head and it's not metal. It's like, that's awesome to see. Yeah. So now my, um, um, my other radio show, apart from this one is actually a um, crossover show of electronic dance music and metal. I, okay. I like a, a club mix, if you will. Okay. Um, of an hour long of mixing up these songs. So bands that have either got electronic parts to them or have been remixed or stuff I've like remixed on the fly. Um, and excision is one of those artists that kind of molds into that. And yeah, I know he's very much into that. That Absolutely. Well. And he's absolutely, he's such a good friend of the Fafaras. It's like, I took my wife and all my kids. He's put us on the list several times. He's always the most polite, nice guy. His show is fucking incredible. But yeah, yeah like, so I listen to everything, man. Uh, and like to, to sit here and name, like, you know, the, the 10 bands that I've just been <laughs> picked up on it, It's hard. Cause I, I probably hear three or four bands a week that I like. Yeah. Um, and that's the one thing with me. Like, uh, it's, it's kind of a running joke over here. Cause I don't watch TV a lot. My wife will be like, Hey, are we going to watch TV tonight? And I'm like, why? And it's like, it's just a running joke. Like, let's just listen to music. Like let's sit and, and let's put on Bauhaus. Yeah. Like let, let's, let's sit and put on fucking, you know, ride the lightning or, you know, or she's constantly turning me on to new bands, you know, devil makes three amigo, amigo, the devil, uh, you know, um, just so many different bands. So, yeah, I mean, I, lo I love music in general. Uh, I've, I've, I've probably said this a million times in, in interviews, but, like, I have no room for purists, like, whatsoever. Like, my, my like, happiest day is when I see the black metal kid at the store in his leather pants that he's been wearing, his black metal makeup, and his hair down to his ass, and his, you know, his bullet belt, and he's wearing a Johnny Cash shirt. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know? So yeah. I got no room for, for the purists, and I... and. And I think that's that's part and parcel of what's make Devil Driver so different is we are all uh, big music fans. I mean, Mike, my guitar player, is a massive industrial metal fan. Uh, you'll catch me listening to everything from you know Black Flag to Billie Holiday. You know, it, it, I love all music to Black Sabbath. You know. Yeah, yeah. No, I had a piece of advice given to me many years ago. I met, um, was fortunate enough to meet Grandmaster Flash. Ooh, um, wow. And, uh, yeah, he's just simply said like, cause I was like, I, I'm a DJ. I've been a DJ for a long time, but, um, I was sort of, you know, you ask him, he's one of the legendary ask him what advice do you have? And he just said, try everything like music, just try every genre. Cause at that point I was kind of into my metal. I was into my kind of dance music, but that was yeah. generally that, you know, apart from a few bits of like classic rock that my dad sort of brought into my life. But, um, right. yeah, no, it was just one of those. Things. And then from then I just sort of, I was buying records, I was buying CDs, you know, I mean, it goes with that, you know, I mean, they, they, they asked Motorhead, they asked Lemmy from Motorhead, you know, it's like, what kind of music do you look like? And he said, good music. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it was so perfect. It's like, oh my God, the perfect answer by, by, you know, a, the God of rock and roll. Yeah. And, you know, damn well, he's not, you know, going in. I mean, I was on his bus. He was, he wasn't always listening to metal. Like he loved blues. He loved all sorts of classic rock stuff. Like he loved all sorts of shit. So I think, yeah, you gotta be open-minded. Um, and, and, and look, as, uh, some of that stuff turns, turns people off, you know, uh, there's people in the metal community. It's like, Oh, I only listen to metal. It's yeah. like, okay, cool, man. Oh, you're so cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Oh, you, you're totally missed out on like 500 genres and, you know, probably another thousand artists that would change your world, man. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I'm a big proponent of hey, open your mind and 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 pour music into it of yeah. all. Yeah. 
yeah yeah definitely definitely so uh, uh, away from music what what are your hobbies obviously just scooting away from that but <laughs> yeah right well um you know i mean i run obviously i run two bands i, I have a, a management company called the oracle management that uh, we just actually folded another manager in yesterday with all his bands and ben black tusk is one of them uh, uh we have a surfwear company called sun cult and you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, we're getting ready to launch. We have surfboards and wax and apparel. And our tag is Worship the Sun. And we, we're launching that uh, at the middle of May, middle to end of May. The website is almost done. Cool. The boards are all complete and fantastic. I grew up surfing. So I kind of grew up on, you know, I was the kid in the, in the car listening to punk rock, smoking a joint <laughs> before I went surfing in the morning. You know, that, that's my youth. Um, so we do we we have that going on. I mean, I'm also a Freemason, so I have you know I have lodge duties uh, and and I have lodge to go to. The, you know, my life is busy when I'm home, and then when I'm on the road, obviously I'm on the computer, I'm on the phone constantly because I'm I'm running all these different businesses. But um, I think that the song "Sail" you know, we did "Sail" because it was blame it on my ADD was <laughs> was the chorus, and it's why I did it because I suffer from yeah. ADD. ADD, ADHD, my whole life. My parents had me on Ritalin when I was a kid. So I can, I can multitask like no other. Yes. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I also, me and my wife both paint. She's a magnificent artist, uh, uh, much better than me. But I paint, she paints. Uh, we, both, we both sculpt. Uh, we both write. A lot of people don't know that. But since our, uh, since our inception dating together almost – almost 20 years ago she's been my writing partner for every record i've ever done cool that's kind of a the thing we just keep sacred to ourselves it's yeah. not like it's it's not like it's written on the record but i mean much like john john cash and 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 uh and his and june carter cash wrote together i mean she wrote ring of fire for him yeah uh anastasia has written some of my biggest songs and it's just a little people don't know that about us so when we're home, we're always writing. I mean, like right now I'm looking at my wife and she's on the computer writing. Nice. We, you know, once we heard that, that, that June and, and, and Johnny Cash wrote together and she wrote Ring of Fire, it was like we started writing together. And uh, a good friend of mine that used to be a tour manager, was a, is a manager of Dolly Parton, helped bring her whole career back, said that she gets up every morning, writes a song first thing, that's all she does. So about 10 years ago, we started doing that. And yeah. We wake, up, we wake up every morning, we write a song and... Now we've got so many books compiled, we're actually thinking about just releasing the books of lyrics uh, by her and I. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that in the future. Awesome. That sounds absolutely brilliant, having that partnership yeah. and obviously lasting that long as well. It's just, you know, these days, not many people last that long. So No, I think, you know, it's unheard of, but I think that the, the, the goes to say that, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I stutter when I even say it. I mean, I'm definitely the most private person in heavy metal. I, I, yeah. I probably make Ozzy look outgoing. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I think that really part and parcel to that, that really helps the relationship a lot too. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that egotistical, you know, singer running around out at, you know, strip clubs, making it rain yeah. with dollar bills and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's awesome. I'm at 10 years myself with my wife. So yeah, there you so, go. And then, yeah. and, and, and there's something to be said for that. Like, and I even say it like, uh, there's guys around me that'll be working for me that'll be married and I, I see them, you know, I see anything that may go down and I'm like, man, you, you know, if you're not loyal to that, you're not going to be loyal to me. Yeah. So, uh, uh, let's part ways. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I've got a couple of fan questions for you now. Um, and then we'll, we can, uh, sort of finish up on that. Um, sure. so first one is from, uh, Ross Davison. Uh, he's from the UK. Uh, he was asking uh, if you have or will ever do an acoustic of another light, another night in London. Wow. God, I, I, you know what I imagine because it's because of the lyrics, because it's like, you know, underneath dark skies, cobblestone streets, kind of like lyrics mm -hmm. really does explain like what London is to me. Like it's yeah, at any moment, like things could pop off on a good Friday night. It's, I love that fucking city, you know? <laughs> I mean, I've been in black cabs running around that city at 4.35 in the morning when the sun is coming up, and I've had to meet, you know, Ozzy to do interviews, and I'm hungover puking out the black cab. and <laughs> You know, like, I, I, I love that city. So, um, you know, I don't know. I don't rule anything out, but that's a great idea. I mean, if it was done right yeah, and done almost like what the Eagles would do with that song, you could make that song a fucking hit. Yeah. 
you know. And there's a there's a classical band that did covers of Devil Driver, and they did that tune, uh, and it was phenomenal, like phenomenal. So I mean, who knows? I I don't rule anything out. Awesome, awesome. Now, however, acoustic at the moment is out for me. Yes. <laughs> 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 cool. Uh, I've got one from uh, a guy called Francisco. He's based out here in Tampa. Um, what's the one place you've always wanted to play, but you haven't yet? That just happened to me a year or two ago, and that was Japan. Okay. Uh, I love that country dearly. I want to get back like yearly if I can. It's a fantastic culture. Uh, the food, the culture, the people are amazing. I have a great story. I went to uh, the Kyoto Castle there, and I left ninety dollars in a ticket machine. Somebody found it and spent an hour looking for me inside the castle just to give it to me and bow to me. Wow. So that would never happen in L.A. People would be like, "Cool, lunch is on me." <laughs> <laughs> And I, it's a fantastic culture. But look, there's all sorts of places that I haven't been. I haven't been to Egypt. I'd like to go there once things settle down yeah. uh, over there. I'd love to go to the Middle East uh, when things settle down. Haven't been to Israel. Would love to get there once things kind of settle down. Uh, I had a great time in Russia. I mean, in Moscow, I got Devil Driver tattooed on my arm in Russian. So I had a great time yeah. uh, there. I'd like to get back there once things settle down. Uh, but there's, you know, the tension right now between everybody is just crazy. Um, China, love to go to China. Uh, but again, like to do that once the tensions and everything yeah. settles down over there. I mean, no one knows if, you know, North Korea or South Korea or whatever is going to pop off a bomb. It's craziness. Yeah, so. no, it's craziness right now. It's, it's just craziness, man. Yeah. And, and uh, I don't know. I want people to just get the feeling that we're all humans on this earth. We don't have to be all divided, but you know, now we even got a president that wants to put up walls and it's just this fucking, it's a craziness, man. Yeah. So, but yeah, there's, there's, there's always places I want to go. Like, I mean, on vacation, I want to get to Bali, Fiji. I keep telling my wife, like I don't smoke cigarettes, but if I ever tell her I'm going out for a pack of smokes, that just means like meet me in Fiji in a week. I'm done. <laughs> it's, it's kind of my code word and she, yeah. and she's ready for it anytime I want. Like, Okay, I'll, you know, I'm going out for a pack of smokes. She'll immediately start packing and know that I'm 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 out of here to, you know, spearfish for the rest of my life and forget about fucking the phone and music and all this other shit, you know. So nice, nice. Yeah, uh, I got one more uh, from Stephen Moore. He's from the UK as well. Uh, he wants to ask me to ask you if you are still into black metal. Yeah, love black metal. I found it, you know, obviously in its uh, inception. Uh, and Phil Insama was a huge uh, proponent of that, uh, turned me on to all of that way back, way back in the day. Um, and then I ended up singing on Viking Crown record with Philip uh, at his house. And so, yeah, definitely love it. Um, not so much the later coming bands uh, as much as, like, say, Venom. And, uh, you know, I, I think Emperor was just fucking fantastic and immortal. And, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I can go on for days about that genre. Awesome. Um, but how, however, the later bands that were coming in, I, I, I didn't I didn't fall for it. So OK, cool. Yeah. Uh, so finally, uh, where's the best place to reach out to you guys um, at band and yourself? Yeah, well, you can you can hit us. Uh, you can hit me on Instagram at Des Wafara. You can hit me on Twitter at Des Wafara. I tend to get back to everybody. I post regularly, and I, the social media is great for me, man, because like I said, I'm so incredibly private. It gives me an outlet to talk to people. It's why I, I, I don't mind doing interviews, and yeah. I don't mind getting on social media, because if I don't do those three things, you're never going to hear from me. <laughs> so, you know, uh, yeah, so you can hit me up anytime you want. And, and the band, man, you can go to, you know, Devil Driver has a, an Instagram you can go to and follow. We've got a Twitter you can follow. We've got a Facebook you can follow. Uh, you can follow the Oracle Management uh, on Instagram and you can get a lot of information there of stuff that I'm doing on the side as well. Uh, so, you know, you cool. can, you can definitely stay in touch with me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Uh, and have a fantastic rest of your day, man. Thank you. You too, man. Take care, bro. Bye-bye.